before I knew my narc was a narc, before I knew for sure that my husband was a djinn and was demons and was a serpent, I did watch this movie, Howl's Moving Castle. I actually purchased it, and I really liked this movie, but I recognized that's a djinn. Um, the, one of the main characters in this movie is a djinn, is a spirit. And I knew what it was. And I knew it wasn't good, and this was something that was forbidden in the Bible. Um, I had seen shadow people at this point when I saw the movie. I'm like, oh, he's a shadow person. And um, there are just many correlations in this film. I do think it's about um, dating or marrying a narcissist. Now, what they don't tell you about is after the, um, quote, love bomb phase, the devaluation and the discard period. That is not mentioned in this film. Um, but this movie is about marrying a narcissist, which is um, a Nephilim and demons. And the fire spirit, the fire spirit in this movie is a demon as well. But, uh, see, I haven't seen this in a while, so I'll have to remember as I go. When the movie first starts off, um, I believe there's a young woman, and she she's very cute and sweet, um, but she's not um, dolling herself up. She's not like uh, traditionally attractive, I suppose. She's just like your girl next door. And of course, this is extremely attractive to the narcissist, which is um, Hal here. I think his name is Hal because he looks human, but he's not human. So he is the narcissist and you can see um, his spirit form. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find the picture, but his spirit form, he is a shadow person. And that is one of the main controlling entities of the narcissist, which I saw, and uh, it would come watch me while the body was sitting downstairs watching TV. So she was your girl next door, which is extremely attractive to the narcissist. She wasn't vain. She wasn't arrogant. She was just a good, hardworking person that, that was caring. And this is one good thing about narcs is that they don't care what you look like actually don't care about your physical appearance at all other than to make someone else jealous they might care in that context but whether or not they want to be with somebody for their own purposes has all to do with their soul with their spirit so that's what they see that's what they desire if you have a, gl a bright glowing spirit a soul you're beautiful um, vibrant person that cares for others this is what the narcissist wants and they don't care if you're fat. They won't care if you're a child. They won't care if you're old. Um, they really don't care about physical appearance, as I said, um, until the discard and deval stage when they want their ex to see them with this person. But other than that, um, this woman here in the movie is a perfect example of the narcissist victim. Uh, because compared to the other women um, that put on makeup and wore fancy clothes and they didn't have the heart that she had, um, she didn't focus on that. She was just a good, compassionate, caring person. This is what the narc seeks. This is their prey. They want to find it and destroy it because these are God's saints. So narcissists do come in male and female varieties. The spirits within them, some have no gender. Some are masculine. Some are feminine. Uh, they don't really care. They will do anything. Um, probably even an animal if the opportunity arose, though I'm not sure if they like the act as much as they like um, <laughs> causing problems for others. So, see, this movie here, um, it looks like an amazing love story where it starts off that um, he's in despair. So, the, ne the narc is in despair. His house is a disgusting, hoarded mess, and it's filthy. So, I'm going to search for some images here and see if I can see it. I will try typing in mess and see what comes up. So when this, uh, I forgot her name. What is her name? I haven't seen this movie in like 10 years. So the um, woman that the narcissist um, gets together with um, is a very sweet, caring empath, and she's not focused on makeup or fancy clothes, because we empaths are not. Um, and she needed a job, and she ends up uh, cleaning up the narcissist's home, which is an airship. And his house is just a disgusting, filthy, hoarded mess, the entire thing. And this is how narcs are. That's how mine was when I met him. But he was young. He was like a, he was 18, so I thought he would grow out of it. Silly me. Um, here's a picture. Uh, well, let's see. 
here's one as that showing up in my video editor um, just the disgusting mess that she has to clean up she's getting paid to clean and she ends up fixing up his entire airship and then uh, she becomes a value mem valuable member of the team after that like she spends countless hours scrubbing and cleaning his disgusting mess because um, this is what they do he probably had gotten out of another relationship since he was older um, where he devalued and discarded someone else and then of course they feel like they're the victim still and everything around them falls apart and then they're wallowing in filth so this is the point when the empath comes in and saves them and cleans up their mess and picks up the pieces and she nurses him back to health and rebuilds his spirit and um, one thing that is not accurate is that she does look old even though she was young there was a spell cast on her to make her look old but actually what the, the narc will do is the narc will poison you and just disappoint you so many times that you end up looking much older than you actually are at the time they leave so I was trying to find more pictures of the mess maybe I'll try putting in a hoard see if that comes up with anything or cleaning Yeah, you think it would be easier to find these pictures, but yeah, he had all these really cool like antiques and potions and all types of things like that. Of course there's potions because they use witchcraft because he's a narc. Let's see. Oh, and here is him. Um this could be like a siren. Um in his bird form, this is like a siren you guys know I made a video about mermaids but there are two types of mermaids and it's still not sure which is which or if one uh, was prevalent or predominant but the siren that we commonly know of is half fish half woman and um, another uh, type of siren people uh, believe might have even been the original translation was part bird part bird and part human and that is the form that um, how transforms into so if you didn't know, these were the parents of the fallen angels' children, and they bore hybrid children, and they were turned into sirens. And I said, sirens can either be mermaids as in fish, or they can be half bird and half human. Surprise, surprise, that's what Hal transforms into. And then you also see him as a shadow person later, surrounded by bright lights. So this, um, this movie is about dating a narcissist and... Uh, uh, this movie is very dangerous because they make it look like the narcissist truly loves you and it's an undying love it's like a love for the ages but the truth is see this is this is what they will do this is like the love um, not the love bomb demon that's that's a demon of obsession but there's another demon within them um, it only appears in the very beginning or if they're trying to get you to fall in love with them after a discard just to mess with your mind and this is not the love bomb it's a different one and this um, demon uses magic and it will gaze into your eyes and save you just like this this is one of the demons in the narcissist I experienced this one after the discard it was very funny um, and it was nice I actually um I knew it was fake but you know what I enjoyed it anyways cuz you know it's been a long time since um, it's been a long time since someone has actually expressed interest in even though I knew it was fake, I still enjoyed it and I pretended it was real and at the end it's like, okay, <laughs> I know you poisoned me, I know you're a demon. <laughs> and that was it. But yes, gazed in, after poisoning me to where I could have died, uh, picked me up and looked into my eyes just like this and said my name and then also released uh, like a pink mist that covered the floor about a foot and it had a feeling very close to love but it was not the same. So anyways, um, this is how the narcissist will look at you. People don't know. Why do you stay with the devil that's destroying your life? It's ruining every possible thing. And if you want to know why, it's because of uh, what you'll see in this movie and how it starts. Where um, there's a point in the movie in the beginning where um, this woman here, what is her name? Let me look it up. Let me look it up real quick because I want to make this video even better. It's not Shihiro, that's from something else. Um, I'll put in cast. Okay, here's the cast. No. Oh, 
it's not telling me. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I could just be stupid here. <laughs> I know that Miyazaki has seen the spirits. Um, I've seen some of the creatures, like in his films, and um, when I can see the spirits manifest or see them behave or talk, you know, in the, their eye expressions, it is just like some of the creatures in his movies. So you guys uh, want to know what spirits are in a narcissist? Watch all of the Miyazaki films. Um, but this is a narcissist um, who was romanced and got his next victim and they just don't show you what happens to her next. So who is, uh, where's the cast? I'm gonna find, uh, is this Sophie? You think this would be easier to? F okay, I'm gonna have to go back here. What are the characters' names? I'll try that. Better give me the response this time. Let's see. Calcifer. Okay, this would be a demon. Um, wizard. How we know that wizards, warlocks, um, witches. That's a sin, and they go to hell according to our Bible. And we hope they repent before they die, so that they can avoid going to hell. But they won't. And the name How, like. Um, a part animal creature would howl. Sophie, Sophie, that's who Chieko Baisho. Okay, so the um, voice actor is Chieko Baisho, and her English name is Sophie Hatter, like the Mad Hatter. Sophie, I wonder what Sophie means. Let's look that up. Okay, okay, I'm gonna do it in a new tab in case I want to reference this again. Let's see what. It means wisdom. Okay. Trying to make an intelligent decision. When it comes to selecting a baby's name, Sophie might be a fitting choice, for it means wisdom, the pinnacle of intelligence, knowledge, and experience. That's beautiful. Okay. So, you know, she's very wise that she married uh, a narcissist. You know, I guess I did too, and I thought I was pretty smart, but <laughs> it's not a, the best decision. No. Let's see. Yeah. If you're with a narcissist, um, it's the opposite of survival of the fittest. You're giving all your resources, money and time and effort away um, while you're not receiving anything back. It's quite, um, it's quite sad actually. So, so oh, Marco, witch of the waste. <laughs> I like these witches. They're interesting characters. We got a scarecrow and like a queen here. Okay, so. Sophie is the empath, and um, she does appear as an old woman, but the narcissist, which is Hal, I think his name is Hal, okay, he doesn't care that she looks old, because they don't care. As I said, this is one good thing about the narcissist, is that they actually care about the spirit and the soul and what that looks like. They don't really care about your physical appearance, unless they can use that to manipulate or devastate someone else but it has nothing to do with their attraction for you. Their attraction for you or the desire for you is envy, jealousy, and um, they are our enemies. So their motive is not what you think it is. And uh, let's see if, uh, so Hal and Sophie, so after she saves him, builds him up, and cleans his hoarded nasty filth mess, we see in this movie, remember guys, all the videos I made about the rat horde and the mouse infestation living with the narc, just like this, okay? And then I get blamed for it. So no, there's no possible way I could have done this. And, uh, let's see. Then of course a siren could be a half human, half bird, which for some reason he transforms into. It doesn't make any sense, like story-wise other than it, it's based on a true story. Uh, something very strange. But you see, he like manifests and teleports to this um, fake heaven realm. And, uh, let's see. And they're just like totally in love. Um, and she saves him and, and it's like uh, they're soulmates and everything's gonna be like happily ever after. Like you wouldn't even believe it. Like this let's see this is fan art I think but you know it just looks like heaven at the end and then this beautiful like lush garden with flowers everywhere and they're gazing into each other's eyes this is like when you get with a narcissist what they'll do 
and the way that he looks into her eyes is what the narcissist will do to you and they'll act like um you're their ride and die no other person is for them only you okay and they thrill you and they'll waste all their money on you and they'll take you on all their trips now they will disappoint you and betray you and turn away your friends and family at all at the same time but like they are totally um slamming you with all of this affection fake affection attention excitement like they really have your adrenaline up so that you don't even notice the ways that they're uh, taking advantage of you if you notice like where they're flying and zipping through the sky and doing all types of missions and avoiding witchcraft and uh, this is like being with a narcissist too though you often have the blinders on during the relationship otherwise you would be gone Let's see yes a love for the ages soulmates everyone will refer to the both of you as one name um, for us it was russ and jen that was our name and no one said russ and no one said jen they said russ and jen so red and white red and white or holy red and the devil and white spirit is what jennifer means so and also me too like this character um i didn't want to put on makeup or wear expensive clothes i didn't want to be masculine but i i wanted us to just be beautiful like the way we are naturally and to be appreciated for that not have to spend a long time um dressing up or putting on makeup i just thought like women looked better naturally and why are we trying to dress up like drag queens? So, of course, um, you know, us empaths and people, chosen ones with higher level of consciousness m might feel this way as well, where health is important. Like, we don't want to let ourselves go. We don't want to get, like, extremely heavy. I'm not saying a little bit, but, you know, we do want to still look healthy and good. But uh, we're not going to be following the same trends or popular styles as everyone else. Maybe a little, um, like, it might be a woman that doesn't wear makeup or is more like the girl next door this is you're more likely to find this in your empath or chosen one because they realize that this is an illusion and it's a waste of time there's not enough time to live as it is let's see i think this is uh maybe when uh she was being saved by Hal right here i think it was some some other men came up and they were being threatening to her she might have been okay, she might not have, and how comes and rescues her. This is what your narcissist will do for you in the beginning. Even when you don't need save, they'll step up and they'll try to save you. One example I can think of is that uh, a lot of the um, mutual friends, they weren't great friends, but you know, I guess acquaintances that we knew, they were involved in swinging and swingers parties, and then uh, we went to like a bar or a nightclub just to hang out with them one evening and have some fun. And of course, I'm getting hit on um, by the swingers there, thinking that I'm available, and they're saying that I'm hot. And then, of course, the narcissist like jumps in and, and just, like going to punch someone. But then, uh, the narcissist was just trying to block me from having any fun because uh, they just would go to sleep when we went back home. So you, you see what I mean. Uh, the people that we knew were swingers, but at that point, I was I was no swinger. I was uh, trying to follow God. I was trying to be obedient, even though we went out to the club. I would be there with other people that were swingers, but I would not swing uh, because that was a sin. But there's only a, there's there's only so much like you can do hanging out with people that are satanists or lukewarms or uh, do without wilt, and you just don't really have much in common. You don't enjoy the same things, and um, it's just not interesting to hang out with them. Like I stopped drinking, so you know that was their main uh, activity either that they did for fun. And uh, so anyways, in, in this movie, oh, what was her name? Oh, Sophie. So Sophie was saved by Hal, okay? And my narc stepped in and did the same type of thing for me too. Even though I didn't need saved, I appreciated it because it looked like he cared. But this was, uh, this too was a manipulation and it was fake. But uh, I'm trying to find some more pictures how they make it look like they're so much in love and this is what you will get from the narcissist they do this to you until they have you under their spell like they stare into your eyes like this and that like they're just so happy and they're thrilling you and, and exciting you um but if this movie had continued for another six months you would have seen the outcome of this narcissistic relationship you would have turned him uh, you would have seen him turn into a lazy slacker you would have seen the uh, airship rehorted in a mess again uh, then you would see him um, 
start to ignore. He would start to ignore um, Sophie or do things that are disrespectful. Um, he would start to speak up and, and uh, he would speak highly of like homeless people and uh, put Sophie in situations where she could be in trouble for the sake of others. He would um, leave high tips for others and then not hold Sophie's hands anymore and devalue her and uh, just trash everything and uh, all the while turning people, uh, sp spreading nasty lies and rumors behind her back, um, not romancing her, that would stop. That would stop. Or they maybe once a week would, would uh, yeah. But it wouldn't be exciting and thrilling anymore. That was gone. That, that being has moved on. Um, let's see what else would happen. Yeah, things that she loved, things that she appreciated, would get broken, lost, uh, stolen, damaged, and uh, she wouldn't have any real love, compassion, or empathy. She would be ignored. And how would start to spend time doing other things and ignoring her, and just less and less time for her. And all the while, she's remembering the beginning of this relationship and how amazing it was, and just thinking, like, under the right circumstances, maybe they could get back there. Uh, not knowing that th this was all a plan to suck her in and then um, drain her life force dry. Uh, but God, God restores us. But you can see these pictures of like the amazing love that it looked like they had in the beginning. This is what the narcissist will do for you. And then, um, of course, too, at the end of that relationship, if they had children, they would be used against the parent. Um, Sophie would have been blamed for child abuse, probably try to blame her for pedophilia, just any anything, and then uh, kick her out of the airship with nothing, looking old, poisoned, gaunt. Uh, yeah, she would look like the old woman again by the time the relationship was over. She'd be used up, tossed out on the street, and then uh, he would be romancing probably other men and women as well. Uh, the men would be for um, physical activities, and the women would be to find the next victim, because maybe they do care um, if, if they are seen in a long-term relationship with another man, it does put a damper on their ability to get a new wife. So, poor Sophie would be looking like this again in a few months, and then she would be dumped out on the street after having cleaned and repaired his airship and built him back up, then he would throw away like a piece of trash after disappointing her and telling her that she's worthless and no one would ever want her. So guys, this movie, How's Moving Castle, this is about a narcissist, and what they're showing you in the film is what they actually look like. As I said before, they use technology to make themselves appear human. They don't actually look human. Um, sometimes I can see in the spirit, and I can see what they really look like. I've seen the shadow people. The shadow people are like, um, well, let's see if I can find this. How's Moving Castle shadow person, okay? I had shadow people in my house, and then he turns into one, and that shadow person was the same height and build as my ex-narcissist. So yes, that was one of the main controlling entities that was in him. I don't believe it was a serpent. I think that there was a djinn for a while, and then a serpent too, and they were the main uh, personalities that would pretend to be human once the human soul had gone completely. So, oh, I forgot to put in shadow. How could I do that? Let's see if this shows up. So these spirits, oh, they call these star children here. That's cool. When these are ringing around, I remember that's when he turned into the shadow person. So cool. They're pretty cool there. I think you guys can see. Yeah. See if I can find a clip like on YouTube or something. You guys um, that have been with narcs really need to watch this movie and realize this is what you're dealing with. Like I could see things in the spirit. Most people can't. And this is what they are. I have no idea what this is or maybe this is where he shows as a shadow person or is this him as a child and there's Sophie look at the shooting stars they call the angels falling to earth the fallen angels coming to earth now that I'm watching this um, there are things I've just never considered before I've never looked at it and, and tried to see what other symbology there is. There's the kind dog, belongs to the witch. And Sophie's running on one of the fallen angels falls into the sea.
this movie is pretty cool. Like, I have to watch it again and see what other gems are in here because they actually teach you, like, you can put the pieces together in your own life experiences and learn new things by watching these films. Yes, I do have this muted here. Oh, and who caught that fall? And oh my gosh. So here's the young boy. Something happened to him and he caught the he caught the fallen angel. Is this when he became possessed with the spirits? Oh, look, and how he's eating the fall the okay, the shooting stars are fallen angels. And he consumes one. It goes inside of him like a possession. Now he's coughing. Now what happens? See, I didn't even think of this. And out comes the flame. The fire spirit. Guys, this stuff's all based on a true story. His movies, they're based on a true story. You can't think of this stuff. It's too whimsical. It's too crazy. You think of this yourself um, with, with no context. Okay, she's being lost in the black void of oblivion. Yeah, being with Hal. Yeah, that's about right. Where is Hal as a shadow person? See how moving castle trans I'll try transforms. It's so hard. It's so hard to find what I'm looking for on here. Better mute it so this video doesn't get taken down. Look at the way he was like a little bit taller than her, just like mine was, and then puts his arm around her and fake love. This look, that eye expression is what they will do to you. No, come on now, where's the shadow person? This isn't even it. Okay. That's not even it. Got something else here. I'm not going to disappoint you guys. I'm going to try to find this. Okay, this movie is awesome. Um, if you watch this, you'll learn more about narcs um, than you ever thought. And then just take the rest of the information about how they're the devil and how they destroy you. And try to get you to commit suicide. And add that on to the end here. Maybe it's transformation scene. Like, I I think I have this movie, but you know. Oh, is this it? You guys, um, you see they're in the circle here. So they use in witchcraft. You'll see this stuff in like Sailor Moon. That's all based on a true story. And yes, there are good angels too. So I actually think that Sailor Moon is a good angel. Um, fighting the forces of darkness and see how they're draining your energy. I'll have to make another video on that and how Sailor Moon is based on a true story. All these animes are. Star children. Okay, so the, the stars that fall to Earth are fallen angels. It doesn't say how old these children are. Okay, it's not in this either. Okay, how's mo moving castle? Maybe I'll st search Star Children because I think it's in that scene where I think it's in that scene where you see how it turned into a shadow beam. You see they're going around him over the earth. <laughs> yeah, come on, somebody really thought of this on their own? I don't think so. And all of his films are about spirits and things that really exist. Oh, come on, guys. My viewers have to see this shadow person. It was so cool. Okay, fine, I'll try it again. Transformation scene. That auto filled earlier, so maybe that's what it's called. And they do also have witches in this film that uh, are evil but they also have good qualities and sometimes they make good choices so I do like that because usually evil is not completely evil but witches they are and they would be to Sophie um, that's not quite accurate either so what they're doing is they're taking the demons and devils and making them seem like benevolent beings which is not true 
They would only be temporarily kind, which they hate, in order to entrap you and hurt you more. No. So if you guys want to know how um, these demons behave, look at how the Democrats treat Donald Trump. It's the same. And that's what they're doing to the chosen ones, and that's what they're doing to me. See? Come on, where does he turn into a shadow person? We gotta see this. There's the witch. Oh, she was using witchcraft to make herself appear younger, and when that wore off, then she became much older and uh, less attractive. Okay, here's how as a bird. Pretty cool, huh? And now his hair is red. Oh, uh, guys, I'm sorry, somebody is, <laughs> somebody is talking on this. Okay, so he's a siren, like it's in uh, the Bible and the Apocrypha. So I think the witchcraft spell that was cursed on Sophie, this is probably some magic that the witch used to, so there she was looking young. So what she did is she stole Sophie's youth and she made herself appear younger. So that when Sophie had to look young again, then it had to be reversed and sent back. And this is witchcraft. It, it's not true, but it's the way that things appear to others. Okay, see here, we uh, here's Hal transforming into the bird. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Um, that's what mRNA can do. And he did not care that Sophie looked like this, because as I said, they care what your spirit looks like. Okay, here's the witch having stolen the looks from other people. But Sophie, in her state, in her condition, stands strong. Okay, she's a chosen one fighting the, the kingdom of darkness. I don't know what this is or what this has to do with. Yeah, how cool is that? Like, uh, you, you want this for a husband, a, a giant raven? I don't know how that's going to work, but um, he can make himself look as beautiful as he wants. So he really doesn't care. The, the narcs don't care what you look like. They can change, they can use spells and witchcraft to make themselves appear whatever age that they want. Like, they might start off with a human that they possessed and a human who sold their souls to the devils. Yeah, they may, may start that way. But they can gradually change how that body looks. They can make it more attractive. And um, the human body does look different depending on how the spirit fills it up. So there are different spirits and they impact the way that that body looks. Now, this... Uh, this narc here actually reminds me of my ex-narc a lot. Like where he was tall like this and about that much taller than me and he started very slender with a skinny neck like this and a more slender head and he had big blue eyes just like this. And a lip like this without the bow. Like and, and the nose like this. Ugh. The difference was he had short hair and it was blonde and then it turned dark for some reason when he got older. But this looks a lot like my ex-narc. Seriously. So I think, uh, I think maybe there's a certain prototype they have. Um, I'm not sure, but the eyes like this. Uh, and I noticed like a uh, gray blue, the, the eyes were so light that they almost looked gray, but they were blue. As I said, they don't care what you look like because they can just make themselves look like whatever they want. Was it fancy party at the palace? Come on, where does he turn into a shadow? Like, this whole movie is pretty cool, guys. And here's the chosen one. She um, does not give up. She never gives up. But then she thinks she's found her happiness, and she's really just started on a whole new journey of enslavement and oppression. But uh, maybe in 10 or 20 years, then she'll defeat Hal and send those demons back to Hal. Well, there's um, Spirited Away. So that would be probably the point when the young boy was possessed and um, and he was overtaken by spirits. And this is like what happened to my ex-narcissist too. He was a young boy, child abuse, um, fractured spirit, fractured soul, sold out to the, dev the devils. It's a generational thing, a bloodline thing. Eyes like that. Yeah, oh, there's a good husband, like right here. You could, you could pick anyone. There's millions out there, billions out there, but you want this one. Okay, it's a bird. <laughs> it's a girl. <laughs> but see, 
this is another thing, another point. So, like, he looks very much human here, like your narcissist will. Uh, but she sees his spirit form, and she doesn't even care. Like, she's got the blinders on like we do. We see things. We see spirits. And because of the intensity that they fake love us, uh, because we're their ride or die, and we're the only one for them, that's what they behave like. We just overlook, like, oh, you're transforming into a shadow person. Now you're a, now you're a, a crow human, you know, you're demons. That's okay with me. I'm not even going to say anything. So uh, there's witchcraft probably involved in this too. Um, how we just like overlook certain things that really are uh, a big deal. And I bet you can, looking back, uh, remember and recall certain things like this too. But anyways, there is a point where he becomes a shadow person. And it's around the point where he's falling from the sky. And I think that the, the uh, what they call the children of the stars, star children, and basically he becomes like a shadow you don't see any facial features it's like black but kind of see-through and that's what's holding uh, Sophie's hands that is what the shadow person looks like but see um, it won't be holding your hands and loving you uh, the shadow people would stalk me and just stare at me and watch me and they would um, put off like this intense feeling of fear so it's just a little bit different than this movie guys so that's why this movie is dangerous because it is based on a true story but they don't love you and they seek to have you committed to an insane asylum and um, then committing suicide that's what they want for you or denouncing God living a long life and denouncing God and uh, after all the nasty betrayals they do to you they want you to turn around and start doing that yourself and do that to other people and then you're lost and then you go to hell too actually I think that's what they're really looking for but uh, the demons in them, some might not even be aware of actually what they're doing because they're different ones. And uh, when the devil tells each one to pop in and do a certain task, it will. Um, as I said, uh, compartmentalization, they're probably not even aware. Like one can come in and say, I have no idea. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't remember doing that because a different demon did. And they might not even be aware of the entire plan. Some of them might actually like you. I think some are intimidated and do like us. And they don't realize how they're being used. And some do, and some are very happy to poison and kill us. So, guys, um, yes, I said this movie is dangerous because it looks like a, a true love for the ages. And it's the, that's the exact opposite of what it is. Um, they do admire you to the point of jealousy where they want you destroyed, uh, a skeleton of your former self. And then they suck off all of your resources and energy, vitality, and power. And they feed off of that. So, um, in the beginning, of this movie the narcissist is like bedridden and sad and and like oh woe is me I don't, I don't remember exactly in his house his airship's a complete disaster of a mess uh, this is exactly how you will find the narc and the, the empaths want to save them and so it just does a re it does reverse one flips excuse me so then the narcissist is built up they have energy vitality they're feeling great and then you've like exhausted so many of your resources that now you're worn out but at the end of these relationships you need to call back your power and then the narc will lose everything that they thought they gained it's only temporal so guys um thanks for watching and i might make another one later but uh this movie is definitely worth a watch and if you're with a narcissist this is what you're with but remember the motives are not what they portray in this film uh, most of these spirits are against us and uh, the miyazaki films they make the spirits seem benevolent um no, they are not benevolent. Um, they are against us. They're on the opposite team. So they actually want these films and these movies to come out so people think that they're good. Because they'll lie and they'll pretend to be on our side. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. But then as soon as they've got you, they got you locked in, then that's when they seek to destroy. Like the further they sink their claws into you, the further they can destroy you and your life. The longer that we're, they're with you, the longer they can block all of your opportunities more they go places with you and uh, meet your family and friends then uh, the more of those relationships they can destroy so they have a motive and they have to pretend to be caring to get into your inner circle and they really hate doing this but they're they're enjoying it too because they're thinking about how they're going to use it to hurt you guys thanks for watching god bless you